some 14 centuries, it was the, the way the Mass was celebrated. Gaudeamus omnes in domino, diem festum celebrantes. What is the traditional Latin Mass? The traditional Latin Mass, as I have learned it, is uh, basically the form of the Mass that existed before the changes during and after the Second Vatican Council. What we call today the extraordinary form of the Roman Rite was the Roman Rite from practically the time of Pope St. Gregory the Great from the 6th century until the Missal of Pope Paul VI after the Second Vatican Ecumenical Council. Uh, Missal, which was published in the late 60s and early 70s. And so it uh, is the way in which the holy sacrifice of the Mass has been handed down to us over the centuries, and uh, for that reason it is most sacred in the Church. Uh, in 2007, uh, Pope Benedict did something uh, somewhat unexpected. Following the Council, the, the traditional Latin Mass, the, the Missal of 1962 and, and the ones before it, uh, most people had kind of assumed um, implicitly that it was no longer allowed to be used and, and that it was now forbidden with the, the Novus Ordo and the new, the new Mass which was promulgated. Pope Benedict made clear that not only as Catholics that we were now able to use the, the older rites, um, you know, the 1962 Missal and, and by extension the, the ones before it, but that specifically we were never banned from using it. In the reforms that took place after the Council, which were not intended to radically change the rite, uh, a certain radical changes were made so that it's uh, not so easy to see the the continuity between the ordinary form and the extraordinary form. And so what Pope Benedict XVI was hoping is that by the regular celebration of the extraordinary form, that continuity would be restored and that the ordinary form would be enriched with some of those elements which were uh, rather abruptly uh, taken away from the rite of the Mass after the Council. Asperges me. Let's say since 1995 until today, the number of, of those who uh, really desire to participate in the Holy Mass celebrated according to the extraordinary form grows. And it's not a question of, of people my age or older who knew the ordinary form before the, the uh, changes were made but it's a question many young people, young families with children and young single people who simply see the beauty, the great beauty in the, what is called the traditional mass or the extraordinary form. We started attending the traditional Latin mass in Madison uh, when it was first offered in uh, right following the, uh, the motto proprio. And it had been something that we had been very interested in, fascinated with tried to educate ourselves about, and so when the opportunity presented itself, we were, we were very thankful and took advantage of it. One of my favorite parts has been probably the priest offering Mass ad orientum mm -hmm. or toward liturgical East. When I attend the Novus Ordo, that's probably one of the more um, jarring differences to me, and uh, I feel like praying with the priest, praying at Orientum, um, facing the altar in the tabernacle has enriched my Novus Ordo Mass experience as well. I first came to it as a server when I was about seven years old and it blew my mind. I thought it was so cool, mainly because, mainly because I got to wear a surplus and a cassock, but that's about it. I wasn't too in, engaged in what was going on, it was really just being able to be in the altar and look like a priest, and I thought that was pretty cool. Well, many people complained about the language and 
the ceremonies and how they're too complicated for them. I always find that the different language, the silence all the time, I always find that it really challenges me to become engaged and to really participate in a more full way. The mass makes me care about it. If I didn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't understand what's going on. How did I decide to start attending the traditional Latin Mass? I think that the decision was made for me in that I started studying Gregorian chant in 2001. And the only people who were interested in hearing it in its proper context were those who were attached to the traditional Latin Mass, who had a devotion to the Mass. So my first Mass that I attended uh, in the traditional form was actually a Mass that I was charged to sing the Gregorian chant propers for. I started attending the traditional Latin Mass about five or six years ago. Uh, Bishop Morlino started offering them for the seminarians and diocesan staff and uh, started kind of spreading it out more and more with, with different events and, and really encouraging more people to, to check it out and attend it. it. It started really growing in the area and as it became more available, I also began to attend it more. Uh, more and more priests are starting to offer it for their parishes. I personally bring my family to the traditional Latin Mass as often as possible. Um, most weeks we're able to go uh, depending on our schedule. A lot of my friends I've found also go to it, and I, re I really do encourage them to try it. It's a very, very consistent, very, um, very rigid experience to, to quote a phrase recently used. Um, so I find that really, uh, that consistency, that rigidity, the universality really of it uh, very attractive and something that really, really helps me pray, not having to worry about, you know, is it going to be this option? Or are they going to replace this text with that text? Are they going to sing this or another hymn? You know, is it going to be this or another text? Is it, you know, it's, there's no options of the deacon or anyone else does this. It's just, this is who does it. This is who does it here. This is what's sung. This is what's said. This is what's done. It's just very consistent, uh, very universal. The reality of the Holy Mass is more evident to them, namely that it is an encounter of heaven with earth, that the glorious Christ seated at the right hand of the Father descends uh, to the altar through the ministry of the ordained priest in order to make sacramentally present his sacrifice on Calvary. It's clear that Pope Benedict XVI wanted to call it the extraordinary form. The term is in all, altogether uh, felicitous because it makes it sound like it's something that uh, is completely out of the ordinary, whereas for some 14 centuries, uh, it was the, the way the Mass was celebrated and it was the way in which the, the faithful entered into the, the, the Eucharistic sacrifice and, and received Holy Communion. So I, I oftentimes like to refer to it as the usus antique, where are the older usage simply because it has this ancient uh, and venerable uh, character to it. I just urge people to, to come to know the extraordinary form in order to have a, a more lively contact with their Catholic faith uh, as it has been handed down over the, over the centuries. Mm -hmm.